G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder, and if you don't like being hit by AIM-54 Phoenixes, well, you should play the J-8B. This is a plane that has kind of stood the test of time in War Thunder, despite the intro, it is a very, very competitive plane. I actually really, really enjoy it. It's got a lot of engine power. Now, I understand the J-8B to be a sort of mix between the MiG-21 and the Su-15, I believe. Let me know in the comments section below, but basically this is a 1990s jet from the PLAAF, and actually there's some funny history about the radar. Now, I do actually have a, a little gripe about the radar, and it is that it's not a pulse Doppler radar. It actually doesn't have any look-down modes at all, and so the Aspida missile, or the PL-11 rather, as it's known in China, um, I think it is the PL-11. Let me know in the com comment section below. Again, I may have messed that up, but basically the Aspida missile that it is given uh, really can't use low-altitude tactics. You kind of have to be up a little bit high. Now, like you see in the intro, it does leave you a little bit open to attacks from AIM-54 Phoenixes, especially where the sight lines in the map are quite long, um, and where the travel distances are quite long. But we're on a map here, Korea, which is quite of known for its short sight lines, and as we travel up and down MiG Alley, as so it is affectionately known, we are sort of going to be employing a fairly simple tactic. We're going to stick to the, the canyons, but we're also going to point the nose up occasionally. We're going to just sort of look up, see if we can find anything that is going to pick the horizon, particularly over this mountain ridge in front of us. This one right here, just ahead, and that is going to be our sort of key. We, most of the enemy aircraft tend to fly sort of off to the right, and so if you can catch them firing phoenixes at the aircraft behind you, you really have a good chance to actually do some damage with the Aspida missiles, but we'll sort of get into some alternate tactics in the uh, next couple of matches. This plane is excellent. I honestly have a really, really good time playing this plane almost all the time, because it has such interesting and unique capabilities. Now, we are going to use these interesting and unique capabilities to dodge some of the uh, AIM-54s coming in. Hopefully, they're not AIM-7s, because I have been caught off guard by that several times. But you know what? You live and you learn. The J-8B actually doesn't really have a good top speed. It's only about 1,300 kilometers per hour, which is comparable to that of uh, the MiG-21F. I know, it's pretty lousy. So, you don't really expect much in the way of top speed, but I'll tell you what you do expect. You expect really, really good energy, really good climb, really decent energy retention in turns, particularly for a Delta Wing. These planes are very, very interesting to fly because they just sort of rely on some really unique tactics. You can't, you, you can kind of dogfight in them, but you also can't sustain it for very, very long periods of time. The alternate uh, tactic here that I'm employing is a sort of stealthy sort of come from above, shoot from where your opponents aren't looking tactic, and we're employing the PL-5Bs for that. The 5Bs are, to me, analogous to a 9J, but with really, really long range and very decent maneuvering, but they trade that for worse flare handling, so they don't really handle the flares as nicely. Now, I am going to try and use this radar at low altitude because I've still got the two Aspida missiles left, and I'd really like to use them up, so... This uh, F-16 is looking super juicy, and at about 3 kilometers, the ideal range is there. Now, F-16, not locked, but the little square didn't disappear, so I guess I'll take that. And that leaves us with one missile. I'm going to check my radar, but really at low altitude, it's not very useful. And I'm not really using the J-8 to its full potential, because we're not really at the, uh, the sort of high altitude coming from below, or sorry, coming from above uh, fights that we really want to engage with. The F-16 is going to be our next target here. I don't really think I can confidently set an Aspida missile off in time. I'm going to go for a really lousy spray. I probably should have just avoided it, gone for the vertical. And you can actually see how nicely this thing actually retains energy in a vertical engagement. We can actually go over, uh, sort of nose back onto the F-16. And now we have him essentially energy trapped because our teammates have been firing missiles at him. He really doesn't have much of an option here, and that's a really quick and easy four kill game. We didn't even use all of our missiles, and you will find that. Not only that, but I find that the 23 mils on the uh, J-8B 
just happen to be positioned in a really, really good spot. I just seem to be able to aim them very easily. I don't really know what it is. It might be some bias towards the Communist Party. It could be some, I don't know, some of uh, Emperor Mao's magic. I don't know. I genuinely don't know what makes this thing so much easier to use than something like the MiG-23. Even the MiG-21 I find a little bit more difficult to use, but it could just be a psychological thing. You never know with guns, it tends to be this way, but we're going to be playing the plane how I personally recommend that you play it, and that is going up to a high altitude, going above your opponents, so you sort of sneak around the side, uh, and then dive down on your opponents, fire PL-5Bs, and have an absolute blast. This plane really suits this playstyle because it's got such good climb rate, and it's got a lousy top speed at sea level, so you're sort of best exploiting those low altitude dandies, and uh, this is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to look for that F-14. The PL-5B is on its way. It's very high bore sight, actually, the PL-5B, especially compared to things like the 9J, um, and even comparable to the 9L. It's got a somewhat similar bore sight, I suppose. Uh, it's also got a really long range. It can come out to about 5 kilometers, and you will very easily get 5 kilometer kills with this thing, provided that you're shooting down. And that's the key. You can't be shooting up, you've got to be shooting down, and you can't have enemies that are sort of popping off flares. This is a, is a real detriment, so you can't really engage enemies if they are popping flares. If they're, you know, even remotely conscious of you, they are very easily going to dissuade your missiles from coming after their booty hole. And that's exactly what the F4E has done, so I'm just going to pop it into a vertical. We're going to go around, and we are going to look for another target. This F14 is looking juicy. This F-16 is also looking juicy. There are just too many juicy boys sitting around. And at four and a half kilometers, I'm very confidently going to launch a PL-5B. And I'm going to launch a second one provided that this F-14 stops flaring in my face. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. Now, I don't think the first one hits, but the second one certainly does not miss. It's only going to be a second now. Actually, you know what? Maybe it doesn't because the F-14 used his flares and used his brain. But you know what? You can't flare guns. And this is where the second part of the J-8B comes in handy. It is actually a really good dogfight. It's very, very good. It's very strong, especially when you're up against things like the F-14. You obviously can't sustain it for a very, very long time, but you can really give the F-14s a run for their money. Even things like the MiG-23 are still heavy enough to dogfight, and you can win in a two or three circle dogfight before the MiG-23 truly slows down. But one of the important things here is once you drain the F-14s of your en their energy, it's very easy to come in and swoop on top. We've got ourselves a couple of gun kills here that are extremely impressive. Now, missiles again have been a bit lousy because I've been a little bit wasteful, but this F-14, or this F-4E rather, is a dead dog. He would have been a dead dog anyway, and this F-16 is also coming out to be the same. But the F-16 has a little trick up its sleeve, which is energy retention and acceleration, which the... Uh, which the JAB just doesn't really have. This particular fight was really interesting because another F-16 is sure to join the fray in a little bit, and this will spice things up quite nicely because this particular plane does not do well on low energy states. You can see, or you can hear rather, the uh, F-16. I believe it is the F-16 coming in, or he might come in in a little bit, but this guy is pretty much a done deal, so I just need to make short work of him, but I just can't. And he's at the speed where he can turn around just that little bit inside me. And the only thing I can really do is work on bleeding energy to the point where I cut inside him. And that's kind of what I've done here. But you can you can just see how a prolonged dogfight against the F-16 will just result in my death. So I really can't give it up for very, very long. But unfortunately for the uh, F-16 there, it looks like his first missile has almost gone and killed his teammate. Uh, that's allowed the F-16 to go and chase the MiG-23, and since both of the enemies have th then changed their focus to the MiG-23 ML, it's given me a chance to again sneak in behind this F-16. I need to make this shot now, and am I going to do it? Yes, barely, barely, barely. This gives me just enough time to escape and try and engage this F-16. Unfortunately, the F-16 crashes. I still get four kills, but unfortunately for me, I, I just cannot bring well, I cannot save that MiG-23 and uh, that was that was a little disappointing for me but you know what uh, the J-8B has demonstrated its capabilities as a decent dogfight that's very very odd for a plane that uh, only tops out at 1300 and it doesn't really have the engine power to boot so what 
what on earth is this plane all about? It's it's surprisingly capable. Like, don't write this plane off. It is very, very good. It is obviously better in a missile bus role, but when you do use it as a dogfighter, you can kind of tussle with F-16s for a little while until, of course, the F-16s gain their energy. Now, this particular match is nice and fresh for me. Pretty much just played it before recording, so we're going to pitch up a little bit, get ourselves some little bit of altitude. Of course, looking on the horizon for F-14s or any enemies like that, there seems to be a couple of missiles heading out. So I'm going to suspect that there are a couple of enemies around. This particular match played out a little bit strange. I'm not really sure why, but there are plenty of planes and none of them seem to be firing AIM-54s. Either they've already gotten it out of the way or they just seem to have decided otherwise. This F-14 is going to come around, and at 6 kilometers, I would actually be somewhat confident sending a missile. I'd be more confident at about 5 kilometers, but you really, it's harder to predict that extra sort of length of time between the missile being launched off the rails and the missile hitting your target. So in that time, your opponent can actually make more moves. So we're going to send one, two, and hopefully three there with the MiG-23, but unfortunately, he's just sort of out of range, out of my comfort zone that I'm willing to launch a missile at. But we do pick up two very easy kills doing that sort of come from above and fire below target, uh, into our target below uh, strategy. And it, and it really works. Now, I've noticed that on the scoreboard, there are several enemies that are left to enter the match. And there are several enemies that are coming in right now. This F-16, again, not seeing me. I'm going to come in from above, send a missile out. This MiG-23 is going to be the next target because the F-16 is crossing way too fast. But it looks like there's a missile that is already targeting him. This F-16 is a super juicy target, but again, there are just too many missiles everywhere to deal with. So we're wrapping up the game very, very quickly, and it looks like this is going to be one of those clean sweeps, but you're allowed to, or you're, you're rather facilitated by the J-8B in its ability to get above its opponents and fire down with such long-range missiles that you don't even appear on the spotting system, and that's the beauty of the J-8. Now, this last enemy, I'm pretty conv convinced that he's just sort of YOLOing it a little bit. Oh, he's the second last enemy. I'm going to fire my last missile. It strikes beautifully and creates some beautiful fireworks. So in case you missed the New Year's Eve fireworks, you can always get some down in the video as usual. Just the best content on this channel, nothing else but the best. So the MiG-23 is the last enemy, and we're just going to sort of dive in after him. We're going to try and go for some gun kills, because I'm fairly confident with my aim. However, I am misplaced in my confidence, because I've underled that shot. We're traveling very, very quickly, uh, and maybe this shot will be the one that gets him. I don't know. It was pretty close. He just decides to J out anyway, and that is the match with uh, no issues whatsoever. Now, we are moving on to, I believe, the last match that we have here, and this is an absolute cracker as well. We are facing F-14s again, and they are using the classic AIM-54 Phoenix trick. We, I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like it's woefully ineffective, but it also psychologically sort of trains you to fly in a different way. You have to sort of mentally block it out or just be confident enough to avoid all of them, which, again, my confidence in the beginning of the video, in the intro, was severely misplaced. Now, we're going to be sort of flying along here. There's an F4EJ. Not sure if it's an EJ or an EJ Kai. I'm just going to make sure that he's not firing flares before I send the missile away. And it looks like he's not. He's not really paying attention. So will he pay the repair cost? I think so. And uh, yes, he does, which is beautiful for me. There is an <laughs> absolute Phoenix Fiesta coming straight towards me. And it looks like this F-14 is going to make himself a very juicy meal. I'm going to try the guns instead, and it's not even going to come close. But is he paying attention? Is he sort of going to react? Is he going to do anything for me? And at uh, 1.5 kilometers, the PL-5Bs actually have a fair amount of resistance to flares with the F-14, but it's fine because he didn't flare anyway. And that gives us some very, very easy kills. So moving forward, we have two kills with two missiles. We're just trying to make it two more, hopefully a gun kill. Maybe round it off for an ace. You never know. And that would be a wonderful, wonderful match. But this F-16 here is coming towards me. Now, I don't really want him coming towards me. I really want him coming away so I can use the missile. The F-16 is looking juicy. He doesn't even see me. And the F-5 is flying below me. The F-5, I don't think he has a place here. He's uh, very, very low, very small fry, if you will. Uh, and I really, I really feel bad for the F-5. Uh, even if it is an F-5E, which is, funnily enough, at the same battle rating, but I, I don't know. I don't really feel like it's got the same capabilities. It certainly doesn't fit the meta as well. Now, 
we have a couple of enemies left. Uh, one of them is the one that is was firing the Phoenixes early on in the match. Now, I did give chase to him, but you'll find that the lousy top speed of the J8B is just not enough to really sustain a chase like that. You're better off doing that in something faster that I found to be something like the Mirage or uh, even the MiG-29. The MiG-29 is a really good hunter of these planes. Uh, and just as he decides he's uh, going to J out, I thought, you know what, that's the end of the game. But my uh, my judgment was uh, misplaced once more. It looks like he's going out for a new loadout and he will be on the airfield. He'll probably be taking off. So I'm just going to head over there, waltz over there and see if he responds to any of my movements. He's got a really powerful radar and he can very easily pick me up on that radar. I'm very confident that that is him. And uh, I should also mention despite it being so late in the video, that this RWR is extremely rudimentary. It's only got sort of four directions, and they're both at the, uh, like, the, like, two, four, six, and eight o'clock uh, positions, or, or rather on the, oh, God, quick maths has failed me. So uh, basically on the diagonal positions rather than the heading positions, and you can see the absolute barrage of missiles coming out towards me. Some of these look like they're going to hit, and I thought, you know what, I'm too high up. This must be from the F-14. So I'm going to pop some flares. I'm pretty confident that that is an AIM-9H. So there we go. There's another one, and I've just spotted the little dot of the F-14. So we're going to go down, and I think he's not paying attention to me. I'm not actually sure if he's paying attention at all, but that missile travels out, tracks beautifully, and of course, because the F-14 is not paying attention, he pays the repair cost. That's pretty much it. All you do is you fly high, avoid missiles, and shoot them yourself at targets that don't really suspect, and you actually have a really, really good time in this plane. I thoroughly enjoy this plane. I could actually recommend it genuinely as a good plane at 11.0. It actually could go to 11.3 or, heck, 11.7. But, ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for today. I hope you enjoyed. I'm gratefully appreciative of you guys watching these videos. And of course, this is one of the first videos to be recorded with the 4090. So if you guys are enjoying the quality, let me know in the description below. But until then, take care, and I'll catch you next time.